Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. Today in this video, we'll be undertaking the topic of LT cooling water system on board ships. This system is a diagrammatical representation of the low temperature cooling water circuit that can be present on board your vessel. We have tried to simplify the system only to keep it restricted to the cooling water circuit that is being provided in the lower temperature circuit. That is how the trajectory of the water is from the in main inlet that is through the sea chest and unto the cooler and thereafter again overboard. What we have excluded here is the bifurcation lines that are going into the other coolers such as the lube oil cooler or the air cooler for the main engine through the main cooling seawater system and also the back flushing arrangement that can be optionally present on some of the vessels which we would be taking later on when we will be explaining the specific coolers or the specific networks. So, let us now focus our attention to the simplified circuit that we have in front of us. As we all know that because of the bulk availability of seawater throughout the entire life of the vessel, it is the best available cooling medium that can be utilized without any hazards and without any restrictions. So, our idea is always to divert the heat that is being generated through the onboard systems in such a way that the final cooling is taking through the seawater. However, in our last video, we discussed the ST cooling circuit that is the cooling water circuit that is present on board which is dependent on the fresh water cooling system. Why it is being done in that way is because we, we try to keep the cooling water circuit in a closed loop through fresh water system in order to minimize the leaks and by doing so, we also make sure that with the help of fresh water circulation, the fouling of the coolers, the ingress of salt into the lines and the other potential damages and side effects that can occur due to the circulation of seawater in these lines is mitigated. By doing so, we also make sure that the time interval between overhaul of the coolers, that is the cleaning of the coolers, the cleaning of the lines, the bursting of the lines due to untoward weakening of the lines or uh, selective catalytic action on the lines because of the ingress of seawater is also mitigated. So, now the heat that is being accepted by the fresh water circuit in the cooling water circuit that is used for auxiliary engine or main engine has to be later on diverted to the seawater cooling medium. So, for that we have a separate circuit that is the LT circuit. In the previous video, as we showed that there was a specific line going to and from the LT cooler circuit that is the low temperature circuit which was coming into the HT circuit in the cooler section. So, that is the section that we are focusing on. The high sea chest and the low sea chest are the two possible inlets that are available for us at all points of time to take the seawater inlet. These sea chests have dedicated filters as well as dedicated valves fitted on them. In a typical arrangement, if we go into minute details, the filter would also have purging assemblies so that when we are uh, cleaning the filter manually, we can purge the air out of the system before opening the walls again. As we can see that the filter individually, whether low or high, will be fitted with an inlet and an outlet valve to isolate the line as well as the sea chest at all points of time. Traveling further up the network, the next component would be the seawater cooling pumps. While we are addressing the multiple pumps that are present here as seawater cooling pumps for easier understanding, on board the vessel, you would find it divided into main cooling seawater pump and auxiliary cooling seawater pump in general cases. However, since the lines are interconnected on most of the vessels, the purpose served is the same. Now, these sea cooling water pumps are the ones that are drawing suction from the sea chest for the circulation of the sea water further and then through the discharge, they are sending it into the LT coolers that are present on board. It has to be minded that each seawater pump that is available on board will have its own suction and discharge to isolate the pump in case of emergency as well as also routine overhaul or simply during the time when the pump is non-operational 
so that the other two lines can develop the maximum pressure. In case the pumps are bifurcated into main cooling seawater and auxiliary cooling seawater pump, the lines that will be fragmented for the cooling of blue boil cooler or the main air cooler will be segmented through the main cooling seawater lines. Moving up the network, we see this seawater going into the inlet of the plate type cooler that we have shown here and this is the seawater that is responsible for drawing out and absorbing the heat from the fresh water that is being sent into the inlet side from the HT circuit. As we know that in a plate type cooler, the seawater inlet will be on one side as the fresh water will be on the other side. So, the circulation of this seawater would mean the fresh water which is coming at high temperature into the cooler will gradually lose heat to the sea water thereby reducing the temperature of the fresh water and simultaneously increasing the temperature of the sea water at their respective outlets. As the water would travel further, focusing our attention specifically on the sea water circuit, this sea water outlet then further connects to the main overboard outlet of the sea water line that is present. This overboard line will have a manual closing valve in order to isolate the circuit in case of any maintenance being carried out or also if there is any leakage. It can also have a automatic regulating valve that can be used to maintain the temperature of the circuit. However, that particular arrange arrangement would be available in vessels that are usually sailing in ice regions because by providing that kind of an arrangement, we make sure that the recirculation of the already heated up seawater takes place in the line so that the seawater line is kept at a relatively warmer temperature and no icing occurs in the suction line of the seawater cooling pumps as well as the cooler. But we have not shown that line here because that is not a part of the general arrangement. Usually, there would be a temperature gauge present for manual gauging of the temperature at the outlet line of the sea water that is being diverted from the coolers. This temperature would give us an idea of the temperature gradient with respect to the temperature of the sea water inlet that we are measuring from the filters which, can, which is usually measured with the help of an infrared temperature measurement gun. By doing so, what we are analyzing is the temperature difference between the inlet and the outlet of the seawater circuit and by doing so we are also gauging the efficiency of the cooler that is the temperature gradient gives us the indirect hint towards the efficiency of the cooler as we know that in its optimum condition the cooler is supposed to maintain a certain temperature gradient so by comparing the gradient that is available to us through the readings and the one that is suggested by the maker in the manual we get to know what is the condition of the cooler. As I had discussed before that if we have a backflush arrangement, we can use the backflush arrangement directly to clean the filter and increase the temperature gradient. So, we have a more optimum running condition or in case if the backflush arrangement is not present, then we have to use manual cleaning methods by isolating the cooler one by one by closing the inlet and the outlet walls that are present in the circuit. I hope that this clears out all the doubts that are present in your mind with respect to the LT cooling water circuit that is being commonly implemented on board merchant vessels. If there are any broader doubts that you have with respect to this diagram or to the general LT circuit available on board your vessel, if it has certain different components, please feel free to drop into the comment section and write your queries or doubts and we will be happy to answer them at will. I thank you for witnessing the video and also request you to subscribe our channel and share this content so as to motivate us to keep creating such engaging content even further. Thank you.